Statistically, one third of you in this room has a have a sensitivity or allergy to gluten, whereas 30 years ago, that statistic hardly existed. What changed in our food system over that time that had such a dramatic effect? <laughs> I'm Alex, and I really like gluten, a lot. But I met a little girl five years ago who had never had a cupcake. It broke my heart and sparked my curiosity. She was allergic to gluten and not sure why. I was determined to figure out why. What the heck is gluten? Well, that's where I started. I could take the whole five minutes telling you what it is, but in five seconds, it's a protein found in wheat, barley, and rye. Most of us think of gluten as bread, but it's also found in most processed foods. Some of those foods are a staple in our daily lifestyle, and cutting them out could be very difficult. <laughs> There's also a debate whether or not gluten-free is a fad diet. But this is something that will stick with us for a long time and most likely will increase. There are new discoveries daily linking human discomforts to gluten. So what happens with sens when people with sensitivities eat gluten? Well, for some of us, they're running to the bathroom. Some symptoms are explosive diarrhea, vomiting, bloating, headaches, stomach aches. Some people feel like zombies. <laughs> and looking at sales of gluten-free products purchased by consumers, in 2012, we've reached $5.2 billion in sales. I don't think Whole Foods would be dedicating whole aisle space to gluten-free products if this wasn't something serious. Humans are great at figuring things out, but we don't think ahead much and we tend to overcomplicate. So when wheat became a popular commodity with a high demand, we created commercial farming. That was smart at the time. Our ancestors, or parents for some of us, they took a variety of steps in the preparation of grains, making them easier to digest and absorb, just like, farmer Ham or just like Grandpa or Farmer Henry is demonstrating. Traditional slow processing guaranteed that the final product contained all the essential nutrients found in the grain, what our bodies are used to. When in doubt, remember, slow food equals good food. The Industrial Revolution dramatically changed how we farmed our processed. We quickly abandoned old harvesting methods and processing. That was our first mistake. <laughs> we found without refrigeration or gross chemical preservatives, flour spoils quickly. This made traditional process not suitable for mass production, shipping across the country, or maintaining a long shelf life in grocery stores, which we require today. So what do we do now? We have sped up the process so we can make more bigger, better, faster, and last longer. Our bodies were not ready for that or on that timeline. We use commercial tractors now to mill the fields almost 100 times faster. One of the reasons the little girl had a sensitivity to gluten was because it changed. Current gluten has increased the amount of protein by almost double and lost half the fiber it had 30 years ago, making it unrecognizable for our digestive systems. <laughs> our bodies adapt to change, but not in this case. Our genes, including our digestive systems, come from our grandparents, grandparents, etc and they are used to the original wheat with less proteins and higher fiber. And now it's genetic, both for the plant and the human. Celiac disease, for instance, is proving to be genetic. So therefore, if your mom has celiac, the chances of you having celiac is much higher, and same with your kids. And now farmers today are using the seeds with the added protein in commercial farming. So if the mom plant has an extra protein, so will their seeds. And now our commercial farms are producing mass amounts of wheat, feeding the large population and result a large problem. So was our commercialization of wheat a home run? In terms of labor reduction, inventory increase, and overall sophistication, yes. But one thing we struggle with 30 years later is the unattended consequence of rejecting the new makeup. So what does that look like for us now? For one, we have built a whole new channel catering to people with celiac and gluten intolerance by replicating our favorites. For example, bread is made with rice flour and beer is made with sorghum. So, 
Next time you see someone asking about gluten-free, I hope you have a new perspective on it. To go a step further, I challenge everyone in this room to be aware of the daily lifestyle impact we face based on the decisions our societies make. Take gluten out of your diet for two weeks. How does it affect you? Woo! Woo!